Any remarks? You get set? Play! Only took me three times to press in the button. <laughs> okay, I see the <laughs> universal. Some Pakistan. We hope you keep on a listening. Cause it's damn full talking. Trouble shit. Talking trouble shit. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> Uh, so like, yeah, man. Uh, it's so good to see that right at the beginning. Oh, I love that shot and that, with all the clouds. Ah, uh, I was gifting some of these one time, and I no joke. It was I was trying to gift just the first fifteen minutes of this, and I got so caught up in gifting those shots. Actually, like, right? like just the landscape, it was, it was really cool. Got lost like, in the clouds, in, and out. in the mountains, yeah, and vistas. It was, uh, yeah, it's a good location. It is beautiful, man. Do you know what the location is? is? You know where they filmed this? Uh, oh, sh no, this isn't a Lone Pine. Um, this is, be this is behind New Mexico. Ma Ma Magic Mountain, though, right? Or or is it New Mexico? You said? Uh, yeah. No, no, no. Magic Mountain is two and one and three. Uh, no, because they might have gone back closer to no. Ah, oh, see, now this is where I'm like, I should have done more notes and oh, stuff. Oh, don't worry, I wrote down a whole no, series they went... of questions for you. <laughs> Yeah. No, let's get they. Uh, no, honestly, this is where I'll make sure to remember this when I do it. But uh, I, this isn't a Magic Mountain. This is a closer to home one. Right. Uh, hence the whole, the whole vistas and stuff. Uh, okay, so we're in Lone the mines. Pine. I think not. It somewhere in between Lone Pine and Magic Mountain. Pick one of those. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I yeah I read about that in uh, Seeking Perfection. Yeah, call out that book because it's amazing, man. Oh, yeah, I got it right behind me. <laughs> well, you can't see it, but the other cameras can. All the cameras. Oh, I believe you. <laughs> oh, and, oh, oh, what's so, going like, on here? Talk, is, the, you know, talking about the, something, maybe? that opening and stuff, like, uh, what? I think oh, I lost you. Yeah, like, uh, there's a, oh, do we get started into character action quick? Uh, and, you know... I love that this one takes us off and be like, all right, we already know what's happening. Right. We know that there's graboids and shit. We know that this guy shouldn't be in a fucking mine. Oh, my God. Ah! Uh, and, where's he going? Uh, some oh. great practical effect here, too. Yeah. God. I think he I lost his head. head. <laughs> <laughs> that guy has no more carabessa. Help me! <laughs> Uh, but this, like, man, just way to, it's why I really love this one so much, just way to, like, actually, like, oh. start your Tremors movie, right? you know, with some stakes and some scariness. And those lights going out and then fading to the title ba sequence, that's brilliant. Ba -ba -ba -da -da. Although there's one picture in here that I wonder who took the picture because it's everybody in the town, uh, Billy, including Billy Drago. Right. So like, at one point, they're like, "Oh, hey, Black Hand Kelly, before you go, would you like take yeah. a picture with us? Let's, so let's get some selfies too while we're this. at it." <laughs> <laughs> You're just I, that one, like, um, okay. <laughs> Yeah, and Richter's firearm. I just saw that one last night. Uh, uh, Richter, as in Richter scale. Uh huh. Yeah. Richter's firearms. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because of like graboids and shit, like the size bo size Yep. Nods to Tremors little, One for sure. Uh, little little details. Do we call it Tremors One or Tremors? I always want to call it Tremors, but I feel like if I don't say one, people are gonna think something else. I've been calling it One more and more because people don't don't get it as quick so it's just easier to do that right. oh yeah this is tremors one uh that's tremors four that way you have a sense of where they are in the timeline right right oh there's our guys ss wilson oh, oh, Brent Maddow, beautiful. and S nancy oh. roberts nancy roberts gotta say those names <laughs> <laughs> steve-o <laughs> and brent uh, i would uh, i've been waiting to, i need uh, i've been trying to push brent to get out there and please Give more interviews, man, because he gets so pissed so well. Oh. I love it. Oh, there's that steam engine, and I read that they wanted to get a train, <laughs> but instead they had to run that steam engine through, right? Yeah. Yep, burst. Uh, it, like, ended up being cheaper, and what's always funnier about that is that uh, Steve Wilson loves pedal tractors right. and old-school, like, mechanical stuff like yeah. that. So having, like, the... 
oh, you don't have enough money for a train, but you can have a steam tractor. Oh, hell yeah, I'm in. Let's do this. I love that he directed this one as well. Ah, uh, yeah. And he met his wife on it, too. I always like, what? <laughs> like, that was the weirdest, like, happenstance to me. Like, first, like, starting out on Twitter, like, over, like, over a year ago. Like, and meeting her... And she being like, oh, yeah, you know, I met my husband on the set of Tremors. And then she, like, sent, like, a, she tweeted a picture. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, there was Michael Gross and then this guy in the middle and then her. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like, you know, and then just, like, like a couple hours later. Wait, hold on. Met my husband on the set of Tremors. Wilson. Let me look at this picture. <laughs> oh, the, oh, fuck. Oh, my God. Holy shit. Oh, no. That, that <laughs> and just like freaking out and stuff like that's where uh, pfft, uh, you've seen that one of him at the in and out video uh, in and out with the mask on and shit it's like oh my god like she was posting all yeah. that you're like oh my god <laughs> yep yep that was that was the biggest nerd out moment for me like oh man it's hard it's hard to not nerd out when you when you oh. feel closer to uh to steve a little bit you know hearing yeah. his voice like on I that saw podcast nothing, so. oh <laughs> no, he's he's got he's such a nerd quality to him. You can just listen to him talk about everything all day. Well, you have to do your Steve Wilson voice because I'm probably doing a very bad job. Uh, I, no, that's actually not bad. <laughs> I actually had to. Now I've been listening more. Well, actually, that I've been listening to some newer interviews, <laughs> like that Sons and Shadows one, where you're like, oh yeah. man, you could tell. I was listening to some in like twenty. 15, 2014, when that whole, oh, there might be a Tremors 5 happening. So there's a little more like pep in his voice. Uh -huh. And then now there's the ones after where it didn't happen. And you're just like, oh, you can hear the, I am really, really upset. And, uh, you know, it's gone from like, it, yeah. <laughs> the Steve, I, I, the, the Lost Tapes is his, my Steve Wilson Rogers voice trying to, I'm all peppy uppy. But then you listen to the podcast interviews. He's like, yeah, no, I just want to, I want to stab somebody probably. And, uh, I'd love to do it soon. That would be nice. <laughs> not really. Actually, he's so nonviolent. Like, that's where I uh, kind of love the Tremor saga for putting it out there. That, hey, man, like, your Burt character, like, is not about that. Like, right. d like uh, just stop with the guns and the shooting. I was listening to one with Steve where they were redoing the Magnificent Seven. Yeah. And uh, – he talks about there's a lot of cool like gun stuff that happens where like a guy shoots a knife out of a, 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 a one guy's hand and another guy shoots a gun in front of him and it doesn't phase him. He's like, it's so cool, but no, we're not doing that. <laughs> That's not that is so unrealistic and poor to the design of weapons and shit. We're not. Nope. Nope. Yep. Like I love it. It's great. The rule of cool, but uh, not gonna happen. <laughs> oh, there's the water tower. Or did we miss it already? No, that's rejection. I, did, I thought there was a shot where they kind of like panned around and you see the ejection and then you realize well, it's that's Fuito. rejection. I was talking there a little. Yeah. No, like no, said, no, no, it's fine. For this first 15 minutes. Hey, you know what no, we're no. doing? We're hashtag talking tremors right now. I mean, for reals. Ooh. I still can't believe that that happened. <laughs> oh, there's the bicycle. Oh, and here he is. Like, ah, this is why I love this movie. The subversion of expectations. Right? <laughs> I, I love this scene because you kind of expect him to be on the other side and, and he is but not in the same way that you kind of expect it to, to unfold in other movies. Yeah, and you even have a sense of like, well, maybe he's rough and tumbling like these guys. Right. But oh no, oh wait, there's all this luggage come. Oh, whoa, okay. What's up, Charlie Chaplin? Yeah, he's a refined gentleman. It's not a Charlie Chaplin man. Hello. <laughs> Charlie Chaplin, he's silent. I am he. <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole movie he says nothing. <laughs> Ah, and old Fred, oh man, okay, uh, you find out as you're researching that all these guys have storied, like, character acting, character acting careers, right. and I said, like, watch old Fred in the background here, <laughs> like, a fucking, lo like, he's just eyeing him up, pretty sure he's about to steal Hiram's Right, coat. steal his <laughs> like, stuff, he's probably pickpocketing him right now. Yep, the minute that he sets anything down, that guy is taking it, yep. like, mm-hmm, he, well, that's a real $2 name. <laughs> I'll bet you he gets this solved faster than a, a bee with a horse on its tail. Which I always confuse for a, a horse with a bee on its tail, but it's, oh no, bee with a horse on its tail. <laughs> nice, that's funny. <laughs> I 
feel I've not been privy to critical, most needful information. <laughs> There's the line. And, oh, yeah, I actually, <laughs> I love Baby Fark McGee's acts. You're following him and all of his intergalactic quality gifts. Yeah. Uh, he did one for Burt Gummer Day this last year because he knows how much I love this movie. And he did that. He did that line like straight up, and he was like, "Oh, hey, you know, I made this for you." But he missed the word "critical," oh. like in the GIF. And I was like, I felt so bad for so long. And I didn't say anything. Right. <laughs> like I specifically was like, "No, man, like that." Thanks, awesome. And I would use it and stuff. But then somebody else like called it out, and he actually noticed. And I was like, "Yeah, man, it's kind of funny because it's the most." critical part of the sentence right? too. <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> and he's just like, ah, oh, shit. So he ended up making me another one. Like, did a whole, like, he actually went back and rewatched Tremors 4 and then did a whole post of like, hey, everybody thinks that Tremors 4 sucks, but then you watch it and, oh, no, uh, Tremors 4 is actually really awesome and you should watch it again. I feel I've not been privy to critical most needful information. <laughs> and like he gets he gets people watching Tremors on Imager and he, like all the time. So getting them to look at Tremors 4 even more with that gif is just like, thank you, man. I love you so much. That's I honestly beautiful. don't understand why anybody wouldn't like this movie since at its core, Tremors truly is a, a Western. It has Western in its blood. And I mean, while this isn't truly it. a Western, it's it's you know more set in the nineteenth nineteenth century. Uh, you know, I, I just don't understand what what it is that people wouldn't like about it. It's you. I can't really add anything to that because every time I see someone complain about it, oh, it's you know old westy too wet. You're like, so this, but I just saw you saying like a week ago that you loved the first one because of how westerny it was. Right. Like, but the like uh, Domedy and. Honestly, I really think I. <laughs> this is just in my own personal research. Take it as whatever bias you want uh, for my political opinions. But uh, everyone who doesn't like four really likes Burt Gummer for a very specific uh, reason. I hear you. I understand that. I can see that. And it's not so. Oh, the gingerbread it's not cake so scene. Much that they don't like this movie. They they uh <laughs> they don't like that. Uh, Burt Gummer is a dandy man who doesn't like guns. Oh, I see. Or, that is, or, or the or the implication that uh, his ancestors didn't, you know, or that, that there would be anyone along the line who didn't like guns. I mean, he might as well be a brutal gangster with the way he treats the young boy with this gingerbread cake. Yeah, this is uh, talk about writing too. This is one of my favorite little. Right, like, it sets the character he, so well. <sighs> Uh, it fucking hurts too. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. But it definitely sets his his character up. Like you, you get a sense for who this kind of character really is when you see this happen. Uh, and what's cool about this? Uh, uh, this is some great information to provide. Um, John Welpley, the guy that ended up writing the uh, five and six Tremors, uh, that did this, wrote the wrote the draft of this, or no, no, maybe it was Scott Buck. No, no, no. Yeah, it was Welpley, and. He actually, the Fuito um, Hiram relationship is what he like fleshed out the most. Mm -hmm. Like he, like they already had a bunch of stuff in the script, but they had the other guy come in and just like, oh no, here, let's take this a little bit and make it something more. So every time I see that, I'm like, oh, see, there's a good in, there's a good instance of somebody knowing something tremors and coming in and working with Stampede to like make something better and different. I like, guess really like, mm -hmm. it's not always just about. I love all those guys, but it's not always just about what they can produce because it's you have to bring other people in and make things happen right uh so seeing that like oh he's yeah somebody yeah i love the fuito hiram relationship in this it's one of my favorites well i feel like this, the dna of any product is you know what the creators in, intend and how they are you know so you, you read books about stampede and you see how they create this family environment in in what they're doing and what they're making you know it's a signature it's the dna I, I love it i love when things shift down like that i had some qualms around <clears throat> you know really getting into this and you know reading about it but in one of those first few chapters of Seeking Perfection, where there's almost a whole t chapter about the family nature of the filmmaking. And right. Like how that like attracted everybody and like kept them around. And just Evo Cristante has that quote about like, oh yeah, it taught me that like you can be in this business and still be a regular human being. Right. And not, like 
compromise your mor- morals to do bad things. Like, oh my god, okay, I, oh, I want to help you people even more. Yeah. <laughs> like, Jesus, yes. Exactly, especially when they're it's setting also... the example and raising the bar. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, here we go. The gun scene where they, everybody pulls out I, a I was weapon. Say, I had to. I didn't want. I had to say. I didn't. I always hate being off track with the the arsenal. <laughs> Because then, you know, to those people that are mad because of the he's not Burt Gummer, he gets the minigun at the end. It's, isn't it much more satisfying right. to watch somebody get to that point rather than saying that they could never, ever be like that? Oh, oh, my God. Like, I always love looking at this close. I never noticed that uh, Juan actually ties in the, the kettle for the pot there, which oh. they have to use to set up uh, for the, the sound later on. I, I love, Like I said, I love looking at this like... Right up next to it. I don't usually do this. So it's like, oh, oh, cool. I saw that set up. Nice. I, I, I do remember seeing that later on. It's just sitting on the fire. And I'm like, that's really interesting. I never thought you could put like a silver tea kettle on a fire and warm your water up for tea and, and whatnot. Yep. Fancy people do. <laughs> By the way, that's yeah, it's the... Now cr- it's ad. Just see it sitting there. Damn. That's the cross-country model in, in case you missed it. See, that looks like... Oh, man. I'm looking at that background. I know enough of like landscapes. That looks like... <sighs> That's middle California. I think it's like further out from the Magic Mountain location, more like to the yeah, like, east or something. It's beautiful, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe you it is Mexico, it actually. Because weren't they filming uh, yeah. the TV show down in Mexico and then they were transferring over to this <laughs> set? Yeah, they did. They did. I love that. <laughs> Fucking sucks so much. Sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, let's go film in Mexico. I was listening to an interview with Steve where he was like, you know, people were telling me, uh, uh, I mean, I, and I don't want to, like, I'm not going to name any names because I don't want anyone to get in trouble here, but uh, uh, if they were executing the maneuvers they were to get those weapons across the border, <laughs> well, we may have broken a couple of felonies, and that's just well, that's just wrong. Like, he was, like, that was his, like, man, I, I feel really, if that's what, like, happened, like, Jesus, no, what the fuck? <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> like, just, like, like, openly admitting, like, I really hope we didn't commit a fucking felony, because, like, man... I hate Universal. You just hear that like they fucking, they did that to us. Right. Oh, here we go. I forget this scene. What, are these bad guys or are they on their way to, to No, these are great guys. See, this is always the, you know, in Tremors, you shouldn't have like necessarily bad guys. Uh, I mean, I, 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 there are some maybe bad guys in the TV show. That's the thing. Oh, uh, I want to bring that up. I want to say uh, Black Hand Kelly. I thought his character was so interesting because he, he was a badass, right? <gasps> but he had a gentle soul. I, like, even when he's telling Hiram not to, you know, to get on his own damn horse and stuff like that, I just, I love that he <laughs> treats him kind of like Bert would treat, uh, you know, one of, like, the people under him or something, like Travis or Grady or something like that. Uh, he, but it was a gentle touch, not not mean. He's never mean. He he cares. He. It's not like he's pitying Hiram. He's like that horse scene is. I. I love that you use that because it's. Man, you can't do the basic thing that everybody else out here could do. You're gonna die. Man. Some things a man's got to learn right? how to do for himself. You <laughs> like, gotta learn it. And he's just like, you're, damn it, you're gonna get. <laughs> you're gonna get. You're gonna get. Like you, you can tell he's like, man. Like I'm. I want to take your money and all that, but like. At what cost? Come on, man. Like, come on, dude. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Have some... Ha- hey, gum it. Never have some pride. Like... And he... Yeah, it's not... It doesn't hurt. I I, all, I love all of those lines. Uh, I, Black Hand Kelly is probably my favorite character in this movie, yeah. actually. Uh, and he... Because, it, yeah, it's exactly that. He cares. Oh, nasty. He's just a little... Just a piece of scalp. And then the hat runner! The hat runner! Ah! (laughs) I'm a a sucker. (laughs) I'm a sucker for a good runner, man. Like, that's uh, that's why I loved your book thing. Like, the the perfection fading off into the the wind at the end was... (laughs) It hurts so much. Because when you build those things up and then you complete them, uh, it's so much more satisfying. The rule of threes and all that jazz. Right, right. Uh, and this, the hat thing, I do, is simple. And when I talk about it in the fifth one, where they, the hand spit thing, 
is really simple storytelling, but it's super effective. It probably took a, a grand total of like thirty seconds of the movie, but it's probably my favorite part of that movie. Right. When Bert and the and the bush pilot finally shake spit hands, you're like, oh yeah, that was earned. Okay, I'm in. Oh, I love the line in that movie. Uh, are you are you drunk? Not yet. <laughs> nope, not yet. <laughs> He again, probably my favorite part of that movie. The and that's actually a good that Bush pilot. I talk about it in that episode to expand that character out and be like, hey, let's actually ask Bert some questions here about the life. You know, it's a strange attraction, a man who hunts a monster. You know, to really ask him that question, what the, hey man, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, you know, I'm out here in Africa doing all this, and even I wouldn't be fucking <laughs> <that> boy, bro. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty crazy, you know, drinking while I'm piloting, but nope. <laughs> <laughs> He's like an air pirate or something. Yeah, like, but to, to to question the character, and that's and to that's to go back to where we started with this, where the character arc for Hiram, uh, Black Hand Kelly pushing him and actually questioning him is what halfway makes him turn, at least yeah. three quarters of the way turn, and then on that other end, Christine. Christine, like, saying, like, what is the value of your money if you're not, like, yeah. you're alive to maybe use it, but, like, you're not really alive in your soul and stuff, like. Yeah. Uh, why is me? I love Some, the uh, hammock. Someone once told me it's not how you spend spend your money, but you're like, and it saves, again, that's, the, this, set it up. All right, here we got this thing. It looks completely innocuous. Oh, but actually, oh, we're going to use it to. To trap a graboid later, right? And I'm, uh, I got. I keep talking about other movies too, so I hope whoever's listening to this podcast has listened to the other podcast episodes, or at least read the script for Tremors Five Gum Gummer Down Under, so they know the the mini G, the mini G attack. No, oh, he's setting the kettle down. Here we go. Yep. Yep. There we <laughs> uh, go. The mini G attacks. <laughs> uh, I've these things are amazing. Uh, and it is such a shame that this is the only scene that we see these things in. Interesting how he puts the hat on when he talks about not losing his ranch and he's like kind of a, trying to be confident and stuff, but the, the hat is a recurring theme with him. Mm hmm. Uh, and, and what you're. That's his goal. The hat, uh, the covering of his own head, that is his life goal to not. To have shelter. Oh my god, that's shelter for a head! Whoa, right? sorry. Right? <laughs> I love hats. I actually love hats, and it's for that specific reason people should wear more full-brimmed hats because we need to protect our heads. Right. Uh, the, our brains are very important, so it's actually wear more hats, people. I love Steve Wills. I, <laughs> it's interesting. got that fucking hat on. Today, I was actually going to go get a nice new hat, and I changed my plans so that we could can, we can do Talking Tremors. Like, not, not this kind of hat, but like Aww. a hat like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, for me, uh, I... I guess I watched Jurassic Park at a young age. It is the Alan Grant hat to me, or the the well the Kate, the Helen uh, the Helen Shaver Kate Riley hat too mm -hmm. for Tremors yep. too. Yep. But that's the same thing. But yeah, I always get it if I can find that right hat. I just love to do in freeze. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, yeah. Still haven't found that right hat yet though. But I'm always looking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like Juan. I, I haven't found my my perfect hat, but I will keep trying. <laughs> it's got to look right, otherwise, what's the point? Yeah. Like I said, I, I could tell Steve found that great. He's got a great white one and another brown one that he had on the first movie, where he's just like, oh yeah, you found a good hat and you just kept it. Man. Yeah. Nice. Bravo. <laughs> oh. They're getting sprayed Which, with something. Now that I'm saying it, that's why Steve loves hats. Oh my, that's what. Sorry, not that's why Juan loves hats. There's a little bit of Steve. Right. Coming. That's hilarious. Interesting. Got <laughs> you gotta, you gotta examine the writer. You know, that's the. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so so I, I wasn't yeah. watching. I'm, I'm sorry, but the guy with the accordion walked away, and now we're getting sprayed with dirt and big. Uh, sloppy. <laughs> oh. Or no, not sloppy, soggy, soggy. Because he, oh, why do you, oh, soggy. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> I, what? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the, yeah, this is, like I said, these little things. That, that, and it's so simple, you can tell that it's just like, it looks like some hand puppetry. Uh, I learned that on the behind the scenes of the first one, that a hand puppet goes so far. Wow. That's that you great. you build something up, but yeah, that. <laughs> well, it's like and that's our real, like, 
our first we get to see somebody dragged down right but into the dirt. dragged almost quartered too movie. right did they pull from different up opposing yeah. directions oh yeah that's that's horror I, right there i man. assume that once he i assume once he went underground that that is definitely what oh my god i didn't think about that but that oh man what? he did get pulled Oh man! But oh, yeah, see, they're tiny, great. and then that's a great reverse shot. Like that's just obviously in reverse and yeah. put it back up. But then, oh, and he uses the net. Easy this is. The the launching. Oh no! I yeah, missed. the launching ability of these things <laughs> takes it down. That yeah, set up set up the hammock, use it. <laughs> well, and that's a nod to the, the TV yeah, show, right? Their ability to. Uh, oh, oh my God! It is because of the. Oh, it totally is macrame. Yeah, the ha- why are we why are we doing the macrame? Should we do it? Shouldn't we do something more important? Right. Oh, what if you needed to uh, make a, a hammock or a shelter or carry the wounded, <laughs> someone whose leg had been yes. mangled and burnt off? Because that's currently what I'm thinking of right now. <laughs> I don't blame her. Guilt man. Oh, and then yeah, yeah. And it, Steve talks about it when you know the rules of something, and then oh yeah, you know the. You, Wow, we all know, we know as fans, but when you're first coming into this, seeing that, oh, the sound, oh, boom, 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 and then watching these guys actually put it together, oh, fuck, okay. Right, <laughs> yeah. That was a pretty, it's, that was a pretty so horrifying scene, terrifying. man. Yeah, With them man. popping and out that, of the uh, ground. Poo, 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 poo. They're so fast. Good Like, heavens. they combine the... the uh, the secret nature of graboids with the speed of shriekers. Uh huh. So, like the the Australian one, they have it where there's hundreds of them, and just imagine that, just like boom, 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 fucking flying. Yeah, a swarm, oh. swarm of graboids. Mini G. That's what they call them in the script. Mini Gs. Mini and G's. just like boom, 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 and it's easy to film too, as you just like all of that was super. There was a grand total of maybe two puppets there. Um, and then had some reverse footage, hand puppetry, a little stop motion uh, in there too. A couple like. of lead stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, it did. Oh, there's the hat. He lost the, the hat. Hand right there. He lost there's his there's shelter. The, no the, more shelter for you, Juan. There's three hats. <laughs> three hats. Three hats. Right. <laughs> and yeah, I, and just imagining like them shooting out of the ground. Uh huh. Boom. Boom. boom, boom. It's it sucks that this is the only scene we get of them, because and, 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 they and, scare the fuck out of me. And he seems perplexed, but and, and a little fearful, but like he's not fully realizing the situation just yet, too. Understanding the gravity. How of would it. you? I, I mean, <coughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. You did a great job with that uh, with Wilson Stevens, where it's like, how do you fully grasp the nature of that situation? Right. When you don't have you don't have any, all of the pieces. No point of reference. Nope. Maybe you saw it on a People magazine or whatever, but that's about it. Or, you know, you saw it like, <laughs> how do you tell yourself that, oh, yeah, that Graboid, that's a thing. Oh, my favorite setup. This is even better. This is even better setup than the, the sleeping bag. Oh, no, I, maybe it's equal, but this is my. Tacopa, what are you doing? Being a spot for our flagpole. <laughs> Does not concern you that Nevada has not yet adopted a flag? <laughs> it will. It will one day. And I'll be ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe not, but who cares? Because that's the it's it, okay. Maybe not the be- better setup than the sleeping bag for Shadow, but that saw in the ground kill that they do with that later mm-hmm. is my favorite kill. Is legit. Uh, th- not just creativity with the writing, but then oh man, that's just damn. That's cool. Like that character thinking that smartly in that moment. Wow. Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. And even to save Juan, because Juan's going down. So, yeah, man, just they're thinking. Everybody's thinking. Let loose. Let lead fly. <laughs> Hit him with both barrels. And uh, now that I'm thinking, so the old Fred character, if you know, uh, if you, there's an alternate opening for the first movie with old Fred and Edgar. Right. And there's a, it's, it's about five minutes long or whatever. And I've always thought that the old Fred in this is... Again, Steve Wilson being like, you fucking made me... He really loved that opener. He's like, you fucking made me write that out. Yeah. So I'm going to bring old Fred back the fuck in, and he's going to... Old Fred and Edgar. He's going to be one person. (laughs) 
and he's gonna have multiple scenes and lines with the main characters. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it, though, when like you're a writer, you know? You, your your p most powerful tool is the ability to create. And you distort the... Or I, I always have a hard time doing that, where it's like making that fiction that is also about your reality. Right. Uh, using the tools that you have. Again, that's uh, you, that writing perfection, that was... I could tell that was your own struggle with it, too. Also coming out, it was beautiful. Yeah, that was fun to write, and I don't. I, hopefully, that bicycle in there was a throwback to, for some people to the bicycle in this one. I thought it was <laughs> cross country <laughs> model. The way it was breaking, I, I yeah, give up. The chain, yeah. the chain breaks. It's the cross country model. Yeah. I, yeah, it was like, yeah. The tooth thing was just me wanting to be disgusting. I mean, <laughs> if it was disgusting. It's I. You actually, you're. The, the pen flying too and the I love the rag and the like Wilson's disgust in that moment like oh my god what is this man yeah it's all right, man it's a band -aid. oh yeah the, the pen lancing the eye is definitely a personal fear and then the tooth thing was actually I had a, a tooth that broke off once so I have the personal experience oh. <laughs> but you know you write what you know there's your writer informing yeah man and even uh, oh and here comes our we'll bring it bringing it back around to the bike. Uh, I mean, <laughs> oh, here can't we go. imagine fixing this without the the tools of our, our time. He's way uh, out of his league too. Uh, nope, man. You didn't. You didn't even know how to ride a horse. What makes you think you're gonna do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go, Fuito. Go. Nice, nice that he has a blanket. Do you think he's cold? I, I, I. You know, I didn't even think about that. I was so focused on I want that blanket, but to, <laughs> is it cold? That's it a does look like a nice blanket, I, actually. Now that you mention it, it I always like those uh, not wool but heavy Indian blankets. Those are good. Yeah. Uh, but no, I'm just like I, I guess I didn't think of it because I, when I see old people with a blanket on, that just seems like a normal thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like that's a maybe not old but a fancy person. Oh, I just fancy it's yeah. my afternoon blanket. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I get that because he doesn't look that old or represented too old. But I, you know, I could see fancy being part of the equation. That's what. Yeah, fanciness. Fancy. Anyone can be taken advantage of, and if you can, do. Oh, right back in your yeah, face. Yeah, bitch. What? What you gonna do? Bam. <laughs> Bam. He threw it down. He threw down Mass the gauntlet. Cut. And I love and how he Michael responds, too. Picked. I love that he, like, makes a compromise instead of being a jerk, you know? Why would he be a jerk, first yep. of all? But, you know, I like that constant emphasis on being a role model. Yep. He knows, like, oh, you caught me. Uh, that was what I said. You're actually... And his point was to take that advice. So he did... The kid did take his advice. So it's like, shh. Right. Well, okay, man. I mean, let's do this. Yeah, if you're going to be a gentleman, you got to set the example of what that is too, in the proper way, I guess. I don't know. Maybe he has that as a credo, or yeah, well, be kind. Everybody should. I feel like most of these people do not as a credo, but they all know to try to be better people. Right. Not bad. Yeah. Look at him go. Not bad not at all. Not bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the tractor again. Yeah, I actually had a friend of mine. We watched the fourth movie a couple months ago, and then she just sent me a video of the largest steam tractor in the world. I was like, oh, thank you. Oh, it's adorable. Thanks for remembering. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's the saw. Make yep. sure you remember the saw. <laughs> He's got the blanket on again. Uh -huh. Maybe it's just it's their way of indicating fanciness. It's, it's some some kind of visual flourish. Looks like a heavy blanket yeah, though. Yeah, because you. Yeah, I, I'm really wondering how hot or cold it it's is. It's a there. weighted blanket from the 19th century. Yeah, you can never tell with the actual filming of these because sometimes they're filming in the middle of January and you have no idea. Uh, but yeah, maybe yeah, fancy, fancy Indian blanket, and even more so maybe it's to show that he's taking up resources while they right are actually doing work. I mean, it only fits his legs. I mean, that's a sign of, uh, yeah. you know, fanciness right there because it doesn't cover the whole body. You need a different blanket for the rest of your body. If, if I use a blanket, it's usually for everything. Right, yeah. Yeah, you wrap yourself up like a baby and get, a, you know, the thing over yep. your head and everything. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going to just sit there and it's nice out, I just... 
In fact, I stretched my legs enough. Like, that's, that's totally it. It's fancy. He's not moving his legs. No. Uh, okay. We, we discovered some symbolism. So oh, I wait. could acquire funds. <laughs> ah, Michael Gross all angry, too. Like, give that man some more room to act. I always see people are like, oh, you know, Michael Gross can't. Uh, they, they had to kill him. Whatever. Not. Uh. They had to, oh, they had to kill Bert because Michael Gross is getting, you know, he's almost 80 and he can't do movies anymore. And I'm just sitting here like, so did we completely forget that movies are usually a whole bunch of people talking and discussing right. things? And like, yeah. that, that the idea of everybody running for fucking action all the time is a, a fairly modern, like, invention. That's interstitial right that there. Is, like, that's just. We used to, that's theater, you know, like, mm-hmm. and that's why uh, when people come back to Tremors, uh, it's not because of the, it is not because of the action, the monsters are great and stuff, but because of the story. That's that's the only way that you get all the rewatch value out of it, that I've watched Tremors a hundred times. Right. How many people have you heard, seen say that? It's because of the story. Like, you can have great actors, you can have great effects, you can have great what other other things, but if your story's not good, then you have no desire to repeat it. I love this, too, because it further builds the character of being kind and watching out, and it, it's, it's strengthening the bond between he and Fu Yen. You know, it, it's, it's that family yeah. building. It's, they're building the ties right before our eyes. Just And even to then, oh, that was why I was being mean. He can't produce anything himself. Like, he's feel, like almost obsolete, I would guess. In this, I'm, I'm now getting that. That's what the act, the acting of Michael Gross is giving. Right. Where it's like, oh, he's having a whole insecurity. I don't feel relevant in this world anymore. Do you think um, he feels bad about the, the gingerbread cake? At all? Oh, yeah. Oh, I feel... That was a... <laughs> if, you, if you look at the way that that things happened, I bet his dad did that to him. Or, you know, somebody... In his family, did that to him, or somebody that he admired did that to him, and he thought, "Oh yeah, you know, it's a it's a good idea because I saw my parent role model do it, so I can do it to him as a kid." And then he's like, "Oh, okay, now I had that turned back on me. Right? I really don't like that. I'm not I'm not a fan of that. Okay. Yeah. And it's the evolution. Actually, of the then character. change the behavior. Yeah. Give him a a reason. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a. I, I'm really thinking about what you said of the kindness there. Uh, where you're almost Oh, he's just worried about the worried about Fuito working too much. You're like, ah, oh, it's a little bit more than that. He's worried about himself. I've, I've, he's starting to see Fuito. He's starting to see Hiram in Fuito. He's putting himself in other people's shoes. I mean, empathizing. Really, by the end, he's treating other people like he wants to be treated. But the way he wants to be treated it changed throughout the movie. Yep. <laughs> Which is a uh, the. One of the best character arcs anybody could have. Right. Just I'm just assuming that people. I'm just assuming anybody watching this has already seen the movie. I, I hope I'm not spoiling anything. I, I'm, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> I, I <know. laughs> and what an experience! <laughs> Didn't mean to ruin the uh, movie but, for you. Uh, there's and the, the writing and the what you need for Tremors is good acting. Uh, listening to Steve. Oh. Uh, and other people talk about uh, Kevin Bacon. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Oh, I almost, oh. Sorry, I had something to say, but Black Hand Kelly. Also, yeah, there's Michelle Wilson, Steve's wife, in some of these shows, right? too. So right, I, I love, love that. that. Like, you guys got to like, go now, on their Discord I haven't, I haven't, and check out the behind the scenes, and they show all the photos of, of some of these shots. It's that's awesome. That's just photos. It was the video. The video, like, right the, there. Yeah, that's her, right that's there. That's her, There's yeah. Michelle Wilson. Because it takes forever to do second shot, second yeah. unit shot, so they just did that instead. That I assume that's her. Every time we don't see Billy Drago's face, I'm just going to assume that's her. I love this scene for what the ending, ha- you know, the ending of this scene is just, is, I love it. <laughs> Specifically, the, the whole sausage, sausage and string part. Mm-hmm. See? Shoot up in house. <laughs> or the apple. Because <laughs> it's misdirection. You ex- what? everybody's what? expecting it, even the characters in the in the shot. Actually, this is where this movie is my favorite for that, and it, and maybe not in terms of being an original movie, but for sequels. That's why two was my was my favorite before I saw this one, 
because this is like, oh yeah, you know all of these things that are going to happen. We've already, if you're watching and you're a fan, you have these setups in your brain. You've seen this before. You have a general knowledge of it. So like this, oh, okay, are we? Oh, but we didn't. Ha ha. Oh, but then we definitely didn't. And then like there's, they do a one, two, three, four side swipe on it too. Where you're just right? like, shit, it's that so was clever. Some... It's so clever. <laughs> It takes a lot of good uh, film knowledge, writing knowledge, to get that done right. properly and not not come off too clunky or expositionally. Hey, boy, throw me that out. Yeah. <laughs> now throw it right <laughs> straight at me. <laughs> yeah, you think he's going to blow it out of the air in three shots or something, you know? He could have, but then also... Uh, maybe there's a sense of, yeah, way to go, Steve, for not having him shoot at a kid. <laughs> it Actually, you know, it's genius because it's a really good way to show the character's ability and skill and, and other attributes without using a lot of effects or, or yeah, yeah. other shots and stuff like that. It's really clever. He's not a madman. Right? He's, he's just, he is a gunman. That's what they hired him for. Right? <laughs> yeah, you, you think he's a... And then even, like... He knew their expectation too. So like you could tell that he knew that, like what they wanted from him but yeah. he was waiting for his own joke punchline to happen. Right? Right, yeah. Oh, I love that. Holes are smoking. I bet it smells like sausage. Wow. Mm. Oh, I wonder oh I bet oh yeah, you just stopped nitroglycerin or uh yeah. Not nitroglycerin, Jesus, that's insane. Uh. Napalm. No, not napalm. The, <laughs> the cold thing. Oh, I can't remember. Okay. Uh, talk to me about that salary negotiable part. And then you can. This is what I said earlier, where you can tell that you know Black Hand is kind of like, well, you have a lot of money, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna squeeze you for a little bit here. And then that empathy comes in later. We're like, well, I mean, okay, I'm like taking all of your money here. Would you like some lessons in how to be a, a person? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I love his response to his fancy words, charm a, charm a calf out of a cow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just charm a cow right out of her calf. But me, I'm going to need a little something up front. <laughs> and it's that, that wordsmithiness of this, too. You can, yeah. Uh, I really need to read Tucker's Monster. Because oh. I imagine that that's that's straight up Steve. Like I'm so mad at myself because I can tell there's there's so much wordsmith stuff I've seen in his short yeah. stories where you're like, oh okay, no, I, I I need to read that. You do. <laughs> Tucker's is incredible. I'm probably gonna read it oh, again. I, actually, I, I saw but you I, talking about I it. Might man. start Brady Cats next. <laughs> oh, I uh, I just found out he's supposed to be writing a Brady Cats too. He's been working on it for like five years. Oh, nice. Come on, Steve. Give us another one. Freddy Cats uh, and uh, The Mummy, I think. But, but again, he's writing t- still writing TV shows with Brent. That's and awesome. Ron. There's one I'm really excited for uh, where Ron asked them to, can you do a script for a sci-fi fantasy movie that has no special effects in it? Oh, that's a, that's a good and challenge. They they, and they have it done. They just need to, they're shopping it around for shit. Nice. Like that, I'm like, oh, that would be, oh, please. Please and thank you. Okay, so he then, gave... yeah, here, pick out something that feels comfortable in your hand. <laughs> did, did he already he give me Black Hand Kelly any, any kind of payment? I missed it, I think. Uh, yeah. Okay. Double Eagle. Like oh. I said, I can, I got this thing memorized. Every time you, you got a question, I get you back. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a hat Another again. Hat. Another hat. It, it's three hats, because it's... We got the first one. Oh, well, he loses it in the mind, and we get this one, or the one before uh, when she actually uh, the so dead guy's hat. He keeps and going then, out, and he keeps losing the hats after people place them on his head or give them to him. I think it has to represent like the people have your back, or somebody has your back. He or has to pick. Oh. But now you're losing your you because of chaos or something. But you're around people who can also get your back without the hat. He has to earn the hat himself. Right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Because then even, he still ends up losing it even at the end. Right. Because, <laughs> one, knowing you, I brought a spare. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, oh, he probably lost that hat. And then there was like another eight hats in the wagon that Hiram had bought. To just to, we're going to keep these over here because I know you can't 
keep a hat on your head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of like those Atlanta's Hawks uh, caps that they sent Stampede back from the uh, original movie. Didn't they have like thousands of them that they sent or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> but then, you, then you hear people online. They're like, "Oh, I, I need, I want one of those hats, but they're like so expensive, you know. But you, you can't get any memorabilia. They're gone now. Like they made, they made a limited run of it, but oh. then, yeah, and then stopped. And now you can't. I've tried to find. They're like a hundred dollars, man, like or more. That sounds and about I right. Love Sports Trevor's, memorabilia. And I would love that hat, but like, oh man. God, this has been fun. So yeah. I, I, just, I keep getting caught up in it. Oh, boom. And there's, again, we know the sound. They don't 100% know, so, you know, trying to call it. Black Hand. I'm even seeing great coloring costumes. We got Juan almost in all white, Black Hand in all black, Hiram in the grays. I love the detail on Black Hand's coat because you can tell that's a kind of coat you'd wear for riding a horse because the way the, the, the back billows out. Oh yeah, okay. Or I mean, I'm just guessing. I don't actually know, but I, I figured. Oh uh, no, no, I, I now that's why you. Oh, that's what dusters are for. Oh, yeah, no. okay, that's a duster. You're right. Damn it, number ain't you got no pride? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get up on the horse by yourself. <laughs> Should I ever require horsemanship? I shall engage a tutor. <laughs> well, I may not have your. Oh, book but that look on his face, you can tell he's a little ashamed of it too. Being called out yeah, like that. Yeah, man. Being full grown don't make you a man. <laughs> and yeah, man. Like, uh, it, it's like learning. He, and now that I get this, it's like knowing how to ride a bike. Right. That is the the metaphor of like, yeah, you should know how to get up on a horse, man. We, it's easy as riding a bike. <laughs> well, you know, the, the whole time that I when I first watched this, I'm like, oh, I see why Bert became the way. He did, you know, because this is the origin story oh, yeah. of like the fascination with, uh, you know, weapons and, and preparedness. And, yeah, survival and stuff like that. Uh, keep keep it. In, I imagine Hiram was, you know, <laughs> I, I always wondered too, just like how much he ended up telling people about what happened, and but then also just in giving that wisdom of like oh no we're always prepared for everything right uh, i'm not gonna maybe tell you why but we are we're ready for everything all maybe the he time. couldn't maybe he couldn't tell anybody and that's why they're so prepared to prepare for <sighs> every single scenario where somebody might ask about it or need help with it or or something i don't know you know just because you did <clears throat> you knew you couldn't warn people with the information so what you could warn them with was yourself like that's not that's not bad I always assumed that there was a, a diary picture. Like, that would be my one. Hiram is a dude that kept a diary and would would understand the, the use of writing it down but not sharing it immediately. You right. know, having that, okay, I wrote this diary and I'll pass it down to the next generation, you know, by that point. Because they do move out. They move out of perfection. That's the whole, if you read the Stampede thing around, like, 1902... Uh, they move out and go to San Francisco, and then people get mad at this movie because they're like, "Oh, but that ruined the continuity that Bert said he chose to live in the valley." It's like, "Oh, so did you not think that maybe the people moved out, and then he came back to his ancestral home? Like, don't we all do that sometimes? Like, there's, oh, my family used to live there. Maybe I want to kind of go back to it." <laughs> I thought that's that's what totally. happens in, tr in the first Tremors movie is that he came back with Heather. Uh, in order to... That's what... That's my... That's my assumption. Right. That's, and especially with what I've seen Steve write of it, that's the... If uh, Hiram and Christine, you know, go to San Francisco and they're not there, they still... This this mine is still uh, uh, Bert's ancestral... Uh, what the... Like, legacy. Right. So you'd still have that. So you're like, oh, you know, if I, if you were, if it was me, and here's, if this was me, man, I would love to, oh, I, my family owns a mine. I'm going to go out there and hide out there. That's a great idea. Right. And here's, here's another subversion of our own expectations, because we, you know, you've seen the first movie and second movie and the third movie and the TV show by this point, and you're like, oh, no, there's going to be a, there's going to be a jump, the jump scare with the hat. Oh, oh, yeah, we all remember the hat from yep. the first movie, right? And this, I get so mad when the other movies don't do the subtlety thing right, where they're they're trying to remind you of other things. You're like, well, you know, you can do that in a way. Oh, remember 
Remember Edgar? Or, or, or old Fred? Yeah, there he is. <laughs> oh, no, there he is! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking got you, bitches! <laughs> That's awesome. And you're seeing it there, too, but you missed it. <laughs> That's awesome. And then, yeah, this little character... I love this little character line uh, between these guys. Oh, here. yes. Like, uh, perhaps we should have made it longer. <laughs> I ain't toting no more rocks. <laughs> I love what he says, too. <laughs> Fred was a guy. He Take farted. He stinks. I, I don't remember actually what he <laughs> says, but it, it, no, his name was Old Fred. <laughs> <laughs> we called him that because he was old, <laughs> and his name was. He Fred. had a bad breath. <laughs> <laughs> he, he had a bad breath. Drove the freight. <laughs> uh, yes. But I don't want to. He, oh no! It's he drove the freight. He had a bad breath. <laughs> he drove the freight. Drove the freight. He had a bad breath. But I don't want to say that. <laughs> and this, Michael actually inserted this bit. This is... Is this improv? The, animal, the heat of the sun, the glorious winter's rages. Now thy earthly task is done. Home thy God and obtain thy wages. Yeah. Like, he put that in, like, he was like, hey, can I, we have this moment here, do you mind if I do a little bit of Shakespeare? Yes, Michael, go ahead. So I love about Stampede with that actual collaborative nature. Right. Uh, if there's if there's an idea that works, hey, let's oh, do this, it. This one. This. this if it's this not though, here. we're gonna veto. <laughs> I. That's hard ground. All the mealing right station. <laughs> oh, I lost you, damn it. Yeah. Oh man, really? <laughs> here we go. Yes. And giving you, and, and now I'm looking through it, you know, giving you that, okay, we're actually going to, I always love when you go see the path that you'll end up taking right? later to escape. with the bridge. So that way you you know, like, oh, this is, oh, okay, so that's why we're able to do this and go through all these things. Thank you for showing, uh, having an actual sense of geography in a movie is very, very important because it's so hard to maintain that reality that everything you can do to, to keep that. I wonder how many different day. tremors movies and or series episodes have bridges in them and if it's meaningful no i can't I, this is the only one i can think of like actual bridges uh besides tremors five has a bridge in it. yeah i mean they really focused on that bridge even though like extra stuff at the end is all about that bridge But I did. I just saw. Yeah. I saw that bridge, and I'm, I, I started to wonder. You know, are there bridges in any of the other Stampede-based Tremors productions? No. I'm really. That's a, and that's a show-off moment. Uh, you can. I always like noticing because they're effects guys. They, they really. That's what they love, and seeing them. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna show off what we can do here. Which is that's just a great miniature shot that they use a little bit of CGI. Yeah. To like map over. Okay. Which is that great? Oh yeah. You can have both. There's a world where both of those things work, where we use our puppets, but then use the CGI to make our puppets look better. Right. I love that part and there where he tells him to, to face the, the door or, or whatever. Oh, always be prepared. <laughs> and you can tell, oh yeah, I, he took that line and he ran with it. Yep. Because <laughs> they were, and now that I'm thinking about that inevitability, if they had actually like, turn it around or th them having their heads there was an accident in preparedness to wake them up they could have easily like those things could have easily just grabbed one of their heads and just pulled them out they got very lucky yeah that they got woken up as quickly as they did because of the being prepared not prepared for this though which is always the the subversion oh you're always prepared except for the one thing that you weren't prepared for <laughs> Oh man, yeah. No, I, I wouldn't want want any of those tentacles slapping me or, or grabbing me at all. Oh, yeah, that's he, they. So lucky that they that they had turned that way. That would. Are, are they tentacles or are they tongues? Yeah, the, Should I be referring to them as tongues? Uh, it's the same thing. Uh, I always I don't know. Uh, I I've always wondered how much uh, how much they can taste. Uh. That would be a... I should ask Steve that question. Yes, you should. Cause, yeah. Because uh, they, they, they have to go through the dirt and stuff, so like, how much do they actually physically taste things? Right. I, I asked that question with that shit when that guy got eaten in the shit. It's like, why did you do... Maybe you can't taste anything. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the little baby pistol. <laughs> <pistols. laughs> 
and he's so happy to. Ah, I did it. I told me to do something I was comfortable with. <laughs> Love You're that. Right. Yeah. I did say that. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Nothing past that. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, okay. <laughs> and it's that you can set up those your character being unprepared with character moments rather than just negligence. Uh, talked about that in the fifth one where Bert really didn't know fucking South African custom laws right. enough to not know to, what guns to bring and stuff. Like, <laughs> excuse me. No, no, no. You have your idiots like this. Or you just have your, your weapons be effective. That's what makes Graboids so dangerous is you need cannons and bombs to really do anything to them. Punt guns. P punt... <laughs> Apparently for shooting ducks. So this minty this ducks. next scene always gets me because it like builds a level of tension for me as a as the audience member because you know that they're desperate. They need to he needs to practice, but it's also in desperation as well because he's not going to get good in five minutes. But they got to try something. <laughs> but and they're making all this noise you, you too. To learn in twenty minutes what took me twenty years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and but you're still like, well, they have a grand total of nothing else to do or incredibly limited options, so why not? Snake things. Now, I'm really trying to think, what would you be your options at this point? Because they don't know. Like, all they know is what they saw with them, you know, attacking and stuff, and now they have the tongues. So you'd be like, I I'm not... If This is actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it's really smart horror writing, where it's like, oh, we're not going to run out there and go check on the... If the slasher villain's out there. And one of us just dies. Oh no, we're we're just gonna stay here now, and we're gonna show you that you should actually learn how to use a fucking gun. Yeah. <laughs> and I love the, the the one, two, three. This it's okay. You're getting consistency. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love I I love recommending this one for people to watch first if they've never seen any Tremors because you know you're not seeing a full on graboid until the end of this one. You know, it's building up towards Tremors yeah. and Tremors two. I, I feel like it's uh, a better horror buildup, at least. I don't know. I mean, I wish I, if I could go back and erase my mind, I would start with four and, and, and watch it through and see if I have a different take on it. I often think about that, just like how would that, how would that play? Because, uh, yeah, uh, maybe you'll miss some jokes and stuff, but the actual setup and everything else that follows through is a lot That's true. more satisfying. You would miss some, some of the uh, nuances. You're right. You've got a good point. Uh, but still, like, seeing them go from the little baby graboids to the big ones, and then that. I don't, I don't ah, man, yeah, to erase your memory and try again. Right? Oh, man, that would be an incredible tool. You could experience so many things in different ways and, and compare them later. <laughs> yeah, as long as, yeah, you got to be able to retain the memory. Like. <laughs> yeah, somehow. You can, you can offload it to a memory retention device or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What do I look like, a scientist? I got a point. <laughs> yeah, but where do they come from? <laughs> I love this. Uh, there's the great factoid about this where the Skotak brothers were like, hey, we got to. <laughs> we're doing this, uh, and it's it's costing 15 or 50 bucks a board uh, for us to do this effect shot. You know, is there any way to save money? And then Steve was like, oh, yeah, well, you know, we'll just write it from 12 boards to four boards instead. And, like, that's how on the fly, like, right? oh, we have no no money. And we're literally trying to save, like, what would amount to maybe $200, $300 just to get through the night. You're like, damn, man. Well, I remember reading, too, that, we, that steam engine used a lot of lumber. Like, they had a big lumber cost associated with just running that steam engine a couple times, right? Uh, they actually used it, used it for like a generator at certain times because oh, yeah, dang. they were running it anyway, so they would just like they could still hook it up to things and keep it going. That's awesome. Yeah, but you, when you use whatever the fuck you can, man, like that's. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> notice brilliant. until now that Fuyen is doing a modern uh, pen trick with the pencil. Did you catch that? A what? He's doing a modern pen trick, you know, like where you can spin the pen around your fingers. I mean, I, I, oh. maybe they did that back in the 19th century, but I thought that was like a... I assume people get bored with their fingers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Second unit shot. I'm always seeing these more second unit shots 
because uh, these first movies are great about him getting a lot done with that uh, and then yeah the one two three why are we thinking these things why is the oh yeah well I mean it the sound isn't normal sound okay we know that the people are out there doing stuff all right let's check one two okay no this is coming from this direction well I mean nobody else is coming let's go and then, yeah send the woman in I was love yeah man go be feminismo oh. Right, cowboy. Uh, and then here's a, there's a great that was a great puppet and CGI shot. It was obviously puppet with the added boards and stuff. Right. There's a, and then this is CGI too a little bit with the tongues when they come out. But then you have the the main puppet. Oh, it you is a composite. Isn't tell it? that they. Yep. Oh, yep. I haven't looked that closely before. I thought that was all puppet originally. That's nope. foolish of the me to think. The, the the main graboids is the puppet. And then the tongues are, are CGI, and then there's a little bit of comp. Okay, he's without the hat. Yep, and there he lost his hat. There's one, two, <laughs> or no, actually now we're at three hats right? lost. <laughs> well, and he did find that hat that belonged to the, the head, but I don't know if he kept it or not. Oh, no, they didn't keep the uh, old Fred ha hat. I don't know why I'm so fascinated with the hats. <laughs> Cause it's the runner, man. It's the it's the writing of it. I don't know. They want you to focus on the hat. That's why. Yeah. Yes. That's what it is. It's a metaphor we don't fully understand yet. I think it's for shelter. I yeah. Think you're right. It's the chaos of the of life and shielding him from that. That's my. I'm with you. On yeah. That. No, that's great. I can't wait to watch this once it's all you know. <laughs> you got to know your enemy, Hiram. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and nobody's getting mad. Like, they're not, like, there's no real, like, actual, like, fighting. I mean, there's a little, like, tension here, but it's not that argument of, like, no, you don't know. Okay, yeah, you're right. We do have to maybe know our enemy. We should be. You, we did hire you. Okay, maybe we don't know what the fuck we're happening here, but we paid you, so just tell us what to do, bro. And I love this monologue. And then, yeah. We can go full boy, toe to toe, throw everything we got at him. Because you can tell he's losing it. Yeah. Like, I love that he's fucking gone now. Uh, we're, we're losing Black Hand Kelly. And then you see the how, of you know, Hiram's mental state actually has a lot more, um, you know, willpower than anybody else that he seems to encounter. And that I think that's what allows him to, to conquer this in the end. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not, actually, now that you say it, I'm, that I love listening to you. That's a brilliant point. Like, he is more stoic than even Juan or uh, Black Hand Kelly. Like, that's... He seems to have it built into his character to maintain his composure yeah. at all times, no matter what. No matter how scary he is or what the situation is. And I, 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 I start to respect that about this point of the movie, too. And that's that same character yeah, oh, trait that I believe... Uh, Bert gets later on. Oh, yeah. Uh, unflappable would probably be the word for it. You know, until you get flapped, which I love. That's, that is why that scene in Tremors 2 where he pulls up in the truck and the I feel I was denied critical need to know information works. Yes. Yeah. Bert was unflappable, so then you, when you get to that point where he got flapped, you're like, whoa, fuck. It's funny, but also, whoa, okay, yeah. we know we're screwed now. The danger level. Oh, see you and later, Blackhead. With this, the Blackhead, fuck, boom, boom, yeah. boom, eat this. <laughs> he knows he's a goner, but he's still gonna fight going down that gullet. Fuck yeah, man! First person to really fight it going down too. Yep. Everybody else has always just been kind of swallowed, but Blackhead actually got yeah got a couple licks in. <laughs> oh, hey, this is a nod almost to the truck that gets eaten in. What is that? Tremors, two. Because there was a truck that was supposed to come and save uh, them, and then it, it gets eaten, right? But this, I almost felt like that last scene oh, yeah. with the tr with the with the, uh, the trailer was was kind of nodding to that. Pedro, yeah, yeah, Pedro. Oh, oh man, yeah. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> okay. Now I'm seeing it. Okay, Pedro. Hey, Christine, we're over here. Yep. Maybe it's, she's taking a leak. They actually <laughs> get rescued. This. Oh man, that looks like that hurt. That stuff. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, that's actually, Michael, I think he actually did get hurt. Oh, dang. That's, 
remember reading that somewhere. Or no, that was I heard that in an interview with him, but that one that one hurt his back a little bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> Keep going. But no no joke. I think that's the only time he got hurt in any of the Stampede movies. Wow. Like it's specific cuz I remember him saying in an interview that he did get hurt in the 5 through 7 a lot. So it's like, oh, that's his first ouchy ouchy. But maybe that's what you get for like shooting this movie while you're shooting a fucking TV show. Right. Sci-fi Universal NBC. Yep. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and, and we passed by it, but yeah, that miniature shot too under the bridge, just well done. And then now that I'm thinking of it, Fuito giving the slingshot so that we have this going forward. One and a low to the ground shot too. I mean that that's a, that's a common how it slows down. Pacha. Yeah. Uh, people, oh yeah, a graboid could totally like grab a trailer. Yeah, did you think maybe he didn't want to? Like, I don't. They they do a really good. I don't see them really chasing them in any of the other movies, at least the Stampede movies, uh, unless they're like choosing to be chased. And I always assume that the people hunting the graboids are at least going a little bit slower. Yeah. Uh, but I assume you could outrun a graboid. I think I've read. Actually, now that I'm thinking about that, I think Steve has said that on the Stampede site. You can. Uh, outdrive a graboid like they can't go faster than a regular vehicle. So I'll give it 30 miles per hour because it's dirt. It's hard to go through dirt. You have to suspend that level of disbelief anyway. Yeah, I mean, you have to have a lot of force to travel that distance, but they make it look believable. I mean, and it also adds to the power of the graboid. Yeah, it's it's a huge... I assume it's just an elephant underground, you know, and how fast could that push itself? Right. Oh, here's the big, uh, what do you, what, what would you call this part of the well, movie? we were lucky. We would die. What? What would you call this, this, like, transition point where things start to, like, m metamorphosize? Um. Now that I'm, uh, this, this is that atonement. This is when we're coming, but he's. Atonement, I like that, no, yeah. Because uh, we're not, we're almost, uh, Dan Harmon calls it that meeting of the goddess atonement moving up. This is always the character. It's not them when they start to lose what they need to, to move up, but they have to learn that the thing that they want or that they're trying to get, which is Hiram wants his silver mine. Right. And learning that that's not a goal to obtain. He has to find another goal, which is the goal of family. Yeah, either way, Except he has to sacrifice. Mm-hmm. There's a, the choice to which direction, or not which direction, but which thing do you want to be? Do you want to be your old self, or do you want to create something new? Yeah, so this is the meeting of the goddess moving into atonement. Yeah, just like in the beginning, you got the town all together almost against him, but in this case they want to be with him, but he's against them. It's almost like a, a that, reversal. Uh, I'm, uh, I, God, I fucking love you. <sighs> they are. They're really like, oh, hey, man, we did hate you, but we actually, do you want to be a part of our family? Yeah. <laughs> come on, of, like, stay, stay and fight, Hiram. Like, come on, man. Like, yeah, come on. Don't do that. Why well, you just, gotta go? Just went through all that? <laughs> Oh, oh, this is heartbreaking right here. I don't know if I can watch this. I'm going to cry. This is it. Uh, and so I have my nephews, and they just remind me. Like I said, they love Fuito, so I always yeah. get this like, no, oh, I won't do this to you. <laughs> I will make sure I stay and fight the Graboids. I can't. I'm so, oh, he puts oh. the bike down. No. <laughs> oh, and he looks and just, just like, like uh, yeah. This is where I was saying, they're like, oh, we don't need all the action and stuff because the emotional character thing that is happening is so much cooler. Yeah, because while we're watching this <laughs> montage, we're thinking about what he's thinking about. Yeah. The contemplation. Yeah. The, we're, like, I felt tension. The first time I watched that, this, I felt there, tension. <clears throat> now that I'm... Uh, I, he's, he came to the town in a stagecoach carriage. He's leaving it now. By himself. On a horse with no name. On his own. He was he was driven here and brought here on his own, and now 
he's leaving it on it. Oh, oh wow! I, oh wow! I oh, love man. this set right here. This whoever built this. Yeah. This is dope. It's incredible. Here, oh, here, let's let's pause the movie real quick so yeah. I can do this real quick. Actually, this, that's because I love this set too. Are you gonna, are you gonna count? Actually, just nope. You're good. Just pause it for a sec while I do all one right. save. You're all good. Pause. Five, four, three, two, one, and we're back. So you can hit play again. Play. Yep. Play. Yeah, this set's amazing. Yeah. This is a. Uh, I saw you asking that lumber question, and I wonder, like, how much, like... Maybe they filmed this as shot far first. As, I've read, as far as I've read of all of it, it's all... They built that town. That's a... There is a... It's a, a military base there, I think, too, but they built all that. It's Carson City! Oh, is it? Oh! Okay. Oh! Oh, now I got it! No, no, no! Ah, th I knew I fucking had... Rem ah, I read it somewhere! <laughs> it's Carson City? Really? <laughs> Around there, yeah, okay. first, because they they went down there to do that set. Like, there's a, I want to say not a reenactment thing, but there's a, like a, a fort in that area that they might have they used for that. Because yeah. they built, I know that they, all of the town of of rejection is straight up built. Yeah, and this is great too with this rain and stuff. This is them just, uh, I think it rained like two. Out of the four weeks that they were filming this. Oh my goodness. So this rain is them just like, yeah, we, ah, we couldn't get any more, uh, we couldn't get any more coverage days, so we're just gonna film it with the fucking rain. Yeah. <laughs> Which works too, man. I can't, like, bring it on, bring it the. It does add on, a bit of realism uh, to the scene things, too. Yep. Make things harder. That's where it's great to learn things on the fly and deal with it because you can still create something really cool anyway uh they um and man and they look cold too now i'm yeah. like that that wind and stuff everything coming in that's just looks like ugh, looks harsh and it's setting you you were talking about that tension setting you up for now these people are they're desperate yeah look at them they're, they're, they're their emotions are cold and they feel helpless just like the weather around them yeah oh wow but look where he's at. It's sunny. A, There's bugs in the Ser air. And yeah, that's wow. Serendipity there. Guy. That was probably, uh, I imagine that was plenty of Steve there. Just right. Like, yeah, you know, hey, we got to we got to do we got to deal with what we got here. And this is a great this will be cold and wet and we're going to do it on that day. And if that's probably, not intentional. Oh, it's going to rain today. Let, hey, let's film this instead. Right. <laughs> yeah. OK. Like that's my, if it was me and I was on the set, you'd have that. <laughs> oh, God, we got another rain day. Well, here, let's like film this end that we know is going to be put up next to the happy sunshine area. Like right. Just, oh, hey, let's, let's work this in. Oh, in this moment. This is and the she, moment here. The tipping point. People up in rejection. <laughs> Funnier than a dancing bear. Here's one they sent yesterday. <laughs> Giant worms have invaded Upper Valley. <laughs> Send help immediately. <laughs> Giant worms! <laughs> so you take it? Wait, wait. But the story... Don't you have a character arc to finish? Oh, wait. I do. Because I've realized my entire life's pursuit is worthless yep. in the face of guns. I need lots and lots of guns. <laughs> Just buy the whole store. I think that's amazing, too. With the stuff that he has, he can buy, like, that much, you know? Oh, my God. Like, whatever... That thing was, was the, damn, he got a lot out of it. Yeah. I assume that it looked like about $1,000 worth of stuff. Uh, an old-timey money. Yeah, he got, he got something like for everybody. 10000 the, Yeah, and then the punt gun. So I, I think that's, and then some other stuff maybe. I don't remember. We'll have to see. They, they have a bunch, because he does have a bunch of other stuff, it seems like. Oh, it's that yeah. last it's bit not, of hopelessness. Yeah, the, the piano. Maybe I could build a sled, drag it along the last... Last wagon. So in, oh, in the no. isolation of the piano in an empty room. The coldness. It's just sitting there all by its lonesome. Oh, Fuito. Juan. There's a new strike down near Tonopa. I have no subtitles or anything. Oh, no. <laughs> you could literally just... <laughs> well, you, no, you, no, no, I don't need them, bro. I, I don't. We'll go back to San Francisco and then to China. You're not going to work on a railroad like Mama and Papa. 
Oh, I did. I got it. Oh, I was oh, I was about one second early. I was close. <laughs> that base is not Look, necessary. Who's that? Ah, that? Yeah, that looks like... Oh, that's totally Nevada area, man. Or, yeah. Mid Cali's. Yeah. Look, look, it's getting sunnier. It's getting sunnier and drier now oh, that they see. It almost is, isn't it? Like it was a little like damp in the the scene with Christine, but now oh, the yeah. sun, it is it has risen. <laughs> this the TikTok guy, uh, the TikTok grab boy did a great one with this, where he took the Greatest Showman and then clipped it up to this and. Look out, cause here I come! Cause I'm marching on to the beat I drums! <laughs> oh, I love it. This is Prep, this is me, this is who I'm meant to be! It's Mr. Gummer! <laughs> <laughs> it's the triumph, this, yeah! Ba da 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 da! <laughs> a ferocious arrival. A ferocious arrival? <laughs> And I do, I, I wonder too, because they set it up in the TV show with the vortex thing. Like, okay, how much mysticism is actually in this series that right. we weren't uh, hundred percent aware of? And then even too with how Tacopa knows with the spirit spirit beasts that lived in these mountains. Well, shit, man, how long you been dealing with this? <laughs> <laughs> Which also gives credence to why doesn't anybody know about it? Well, shit, man, the only person who knew at this time was the Indian. <laughs> Have you heard of racism? <laughs> oh, see, and he takes everything he learned from Black Hand Kelly and applies it. And just like with several other movies, he has a truck full of stuff he has to show to people. He's, and you know what? Yeah, that's a lot. He's got. I'm looking in there because it looks like he's got. I'm assuming those are the the gunpowder barrels. Yeah, TNT he has powder enough kegs. To build the bomb. Uh huh. Yep. Everybody's got to get, and he even, oh, and he even took the, pick something that feels comfortable in your hand. He actually, now, oh my God, he made sure everybody had exactly the right gun. And then that's that the gun he right gets. Wait, that, that's like him telling himself it's okay <laughs> to like guns. He's going to get the biggest one there is. It's so awesome. Uh, what's funny is that there's compensation and then there's, I don't need to compensate. I can just have a big ass fucking cannon. Yep. <laughs> That's what he's comfortable with now. I mean, I, I think that's what that's supposed to tell us is yeah. that's where he's comfortable now after playing with that little pea shooter. Well, that, well that's where I'm, like your normal joke there would be like, oh, you're compensating for something? No. In fact, I'm not. <laughs> well, shit, I bet Hiram's hung. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess, like, okay. Yeah. You just got a big gun. <laughs> We will stop them out. <laughs> Did you see the barrels? He does have a, a, a keg barrels of powder or something in there. Yeah, no, he's got he's got a bunch in there. Like yeah. that's a whole wagon full of explosives and shit. Yeah, he spent a good thousand old old dollars. Yes, old timey dollars. And then, 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 then I love that all of the people in this movie do get their own little character arcs too. Yeah, uh, absolutely. That sorry, the uh, God Lu Wang and uh, uh, Ping Yang. Uh, that that China San Francisco thing like I, said, I, I'm, I hate racism on so many forms. So being able to draw that and in a, this very like we said family movie being like oh no yeah remember how we like killed Chinese people on the railroads yeah yeah let's this is this is something that happened and little Fuito would have probably ended up dead if Hiram didn't come back. You know? I wonder if the scene where he's Shit. digging the well had to, had something to do with that message too. You know, he doesn't want him in there. He wants him riding the bicycle. Oh, that is that is set up of like of putting it in our minds that that's why. Oh right? yeah, that that could easily happen. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh man, I, uh, this is one of my favorite gifts in the world. Uh, this stare right here. This oh thing yeah. Is, uh, when I first started out, I would use this thing on Imgur all the time and just, what the fuck? Our Alamo! Well, we were the losers at the Alamo. Right there, where he the walks Alamo. in front of it. Yep. What? Hey! Chinatown! It's a new <laughs> day in rejection. It works. <laughs> ah, the, ah, the cans! The cans! I still go back and forth on whether or not Seven is a good movie outside of that 
shitty ass what they did to Bert because they have the cans at the beginning. They yeah. have the cans and the bottles. I've noticed that. Like, how much? I've noticed a lot of people do rank Shrieker Island like a little higher than some like five or six, but never before four or anything. I I rank it higher uh, out of those movies, out of those three. Like it is the high, like the best one. I, but then that ending happens, so that I like ha I have to like th six more. <laughs> oh, just in case anybody was wondering if that it, was powder, it says powder on the side of the barrel. <laughs> powder. <laughs> just in case. You won't blow it up. <laughs> Just the little things. And here's... Oh, there's four horses. And if you look... Oh, my God. I just got this. If you look at the Stampede site, like, they have the emblem of their four horses. Yeah. Those were the different colored horses that are on that emblem. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's, okay, that's no, cool. Oh, yeah. No, that's that's where it's like those were the four... Like, it's a, it's a brown horse, a tan horse, a blackish horse, and a dark brown horse. And... That was them right there. That was Nancy, Brett, Ron, and Steve that just ran by in horse form. That's awesome. <laughs> I just caught that. <laughs> I did. I'm just like, oh, whoa. It's the little things you see. Uh-huh. Once you know everything, and then you can put it together. I love this. Oh, this is one. If I were to write something, I'd, I'd want to. This is something that. I like traps. Was there one where they used the one of those of traps uh, work. kinetic transfer machines, or am I imagining that? You know, like a bunch of balls on like wires, and you you pull one and and lift it back, and then it makes all the balls to keep clicking. Oh, that's six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I Again, uh, that's where I didn't. I I go back and forth on hating six because of those little writing things where you're like, yeah. yeah. I mean, you set that up with the earlier, so then with I the triangle. Like to use yeah. It again. Yeah, oh, here we and go. It works. It's cool. But but I did see somebody point out that uh, if because of the way that gravity and the Newton's cradle works, that they shouldn't be clinking. That if a graboid came up, they would just go back and forth. You have to actually physically pull it. Right. To get you have to pull one end to get it to go and do the actual clink 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 thing. Right. Otherwise. Physics makes it just all of them move at once. Yeah, it's it needs like, oh. that first initial force. Yep, otherwise it's it's all a singular thing. Oh, well, fuck. Maybe I do hate that, then. <laughs> Man, yeah, that's just that's just two buildings, a tiny ass set. Man, they've got they've got more perfection. They got more of the town in this than all three of the Universal State right? or all the Universal Tremors movies. And it's got all the characters. There's more too. buildings. <laughs> was there even I'm a water tower in six? Water, no, no, I, you fucking just beat me to it. That was exactly... There's no water tower in the sixth movie. Yeah. They have this little fucking tank off to the side of Chang's. And I'm like, so you tore your water tower down? Do, does, does, do we have to explain to you water towers in the middle of the desert? And yeah. we don't tear them down for anything? Right. <laughs> like, like, just a um, building in the middle of dirt somewhere. Like, come on, man. That's oh, uh, go. so dumb. Oh, it's the final oh, countdown. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, and, and this is where I, I'm always so mad, too, that Stampede didn't get to make more movies after this, because you can tell uh, <coughs> that after they had been given this permission of, like, oh, he just set it in the Wild West, we don't care, that they would have done everything. Yeah. Anything. They would have just gone different anytime, any place, anywhere. That's why I'm excited for that TV show, because you can just go anywhere. Yeah. And actually, just if you... All those concepts that maybe you don't have enough money to spend in a full movie, and you put them into a TV show episode and get more out of it, so much cooler. He managed to get a shot through it with the you pun missed. gun, didn't he? Uh, no, he missed. You missed with a cannon! <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Number one line I see people quote from this movie, which I'm 100% fine with. <laughs> it is good. Yeah, I'm not used you to watching it on mute, so I just saw the, the puff of uh, gun smoke, and I thought he, he hit it somehow, too. No, no, that was one off to the side. Boom. And then even this the the ineffectiveness of them all poo, 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 they're yeah, all firing yeah. and it's not doing anything. Toy pop guns. Poo, poo, 
boop, 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 boop. Like, yeah, just, not, just, uh, they're unloading, and it's, it's more, ah, that tickles! Oh. Get my back! <laughs> Is that Libby's pumpkin pie mix? Mm. I mean, it's still you know a I bet these guys don't want to eat a graboid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> And yeah, that little. I always love thinking that this is just one. Okay. Good show, good show. Well played, uh, Graboid. Bravo! Bravo, yeah. <laughs> oh, pip pip. Cheerio. <laughs> and thank you, Fuito, for calling out the smell. I'm always yeah. so sad about that, that more people don't. And it's not. It's not in, of course, the universal ones at all. But the, yeah, that smell is incredibly important. Well, if you can't describe a smell in the narrative of a show, you're missing out on a lot of opportunity to let your viewers experience more than just what, what they're already thinking about. Yeah! I, this, I kind of love that about Graboids. They have that, that real-world element where you're like, they, they smell? I Okay, I didn't think about them smelling, but now... And then even the, oh, the live ones smell worse than the dead ones. You're like... What kind of fucking biology is this shit? Because I didn't think of it, but clearly somebody else did. They... Well, and even the, the feeling of them, you never really hear people talking about the feeling of a graboid, but yet Grady went and slapped one that one time when it was alive still. Yeah, I saw you said, like, dude, he slapped one, and then Val technically punched a tentacle. And, uh, yeah, just to actually feel that thing. Yeah. Um... Uh, I was reading a cool thing where the uh, the T Rex skin in some of the newer Jurassic the Jurassic World movies is actually old Graboid skin. Really, Ron Underwood was talking about that. Yeah, they reused. They had some of it in storage because they just had so much of it that they built up, and then they were like, "Oh, we could slap some on our our T Rex here." Yeah, here's the kill. Oh, here yeah. it is. And the and the post too. Wasn't there a hint at a post hole? Being and actually, the this this. Uh, that post is something that they've been wanting to do for a lot of movies. That's actually a uh, stampede was just like, or, or Steve, I guess would, I really love that image of, you know, a guy getting eaten by a graboid on the pole going down. And, like, I yeah. don't know what being a graboid Boom. feels like, but that would hurt. Yeah. Oh, that and the, dead. the guts coming up through the ground. Which get so simple. It's just, you know, a pump with some water. We dug a hole. Pumped it up through. Done, done, done. You don't need the the great big CGI spectacle. No, of you imagine jumping it. out of the ground. Use your brain. The gore is in your brain. It's so much, be so much better. Yeah. It, it, in research, in researching all this and learning more about it, I've learned that that's that's why they chose the monster that they did. That was why what Steve was drawn to from an effect standpoint. Because you're like, damn man, we can get a lot done and not have to spend a lot of money because we don't see it. You can. You can hide eight that back there. That was CGI, that little bit of rolling. Yeah. He went for a little ride there. And that's that's a reverse shot, actually. Those are two reverse shots, actually, coupled together. But you didn't notice. See, I didn't hear you calling it out, so. <laughs> I'm blind to the facts if, of cinema. If you don't if you don't notice, does it matter? That's my it's like a if it's is a joke funny? Well, did you laugh at it? Yeah, well then it's funny. If not, then you missed like it. That. <laughs> like, sorry, like that. Oh, shit, you set that up earlier with the... Most men don't have statues of themselves. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be his no, demand. This... Yeah, and then <laughs> that too. Uh, I want a new statue. One that looks like me. <laughs> and it's, again, it's not racism. It's like, you're like, oh, that's... It's actually the anti-racism of being it's like, oh, yeah, you know, you're all associating the... The, the cigar store Indian and yeah. the Indian guy. Oh, no, we actually did make a statue that looks like the Indian. It's just that specific I'd love to, person, yeah. I'd love to see that thing come back. Like, I don't know who, I doubt anybody, you know, in the valley ever kept that. But it, that would be hilarious if, like, oh, Jody was uh, in the basement of Chang's one day. <laughs> just oh, what's this statue over here in the corner? I'm gonna dust it off. <laughs> oh, it's Tacopa. <laughs> oh man, what? We'd all we'd all know, but she wouldn't. But we would know. Right, exactly. <laughs> and that's, that's I what love matters. those kind of little nods. We just do A man we must can learn to sail at all winds. 
Well said. And this is the <laughs> what what I hate. What I really truly hate about the new the five three seven is just straight up using lines like broke into the wrong goddamn hangar, didn't you? Where you're like, God, mm. that is so so cringe. When we already have the proof concept and template of like here, you can actually change the line. You know, like you can actually change it up in a way that makes reference to what we already know, but then make something new at the same time. And then that. Because by this point, you've already heard it, not just in the second movie, but if you're watching the TV show, you get it a couple of times. Yeah. Like, Bert says it once, and Larry also says it. So you already have you already have three expectations. So then when they come and they just make it Old Westy, and you're like, whoa. Like, went from doing what we can with what I got to, we must do what we can with what we have. You still have that intent there. Right, like, yeah. That is the right. That's why I said I need to. I gotta read Tucker's because uh, of the the wordsmithiness of it. You don't know anything about it, right? About the story. The oh yeah, uh, I, uh, Tucker going out trying to find a dinosaur. He's always wanted to find a dinosaur. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure that that whole book is their template for the Tremors TV show in a sense too. Uh, going cross country and shit. I I just the, the most wonderful thing about Tucker's is the characters, just like anything else Steve writes. It's just it's just full of yeah. great characters. It starts with it. Listening to some interviews and just you could hear him lamenting how, uh, you know, writing scripts these days and everybody wants you to you know get to it quicker, get to it quicker, and then talking about with the first movie, having to f- fight with Universal to get that opening sequence with Val and Earl. Right. And and we all know it now because that's that baloney and beans, you know, and then the rock, paper, scissors set up and that sleeping bag for a shadow yeah. is all in that opening scene and it's all, it's all character stuff. And if you were just like, no, we got to get, as Universal said, we got to get to the monster sooner, you lose all of that and then Tremors just becomes another monster movie. Yeah. Just, just becomes another... An actual B flick that doesn't, you know, they're just putting, and I always hate this, putting people on the screen just to kill them. <laughs> I find, That's my hardest thing uh, in even trying to grasp how to write this is not killing people. Mm-hmm. And if you do kill somebody, giving them enough time on screen to not make it cheap when they die. Like, it, it not not doing the red shirt thing and somebody is, we know that they're going to die and get that set up. Like, no, like, that's... We don't make fun of death. We respect it. And we want we want people to live. We don't want them to die. I, like, I'm, now I'm thinking of that time in, in the fifth movie where Bert kills his first person and there's no discussion about it. Yeah, Bert, Bert Gummer, who has been so so anti, you know, trying not to kill people, like, and accidentally kill somebody, very, not cold blood, but, oh, that was your fault, man, and not, not a word said about it, man, not even from Bert, not from anybody. Ugh. It just seems no, like a punch to the, no. the stomach, just like when you're, you're in your uh, episode six, you were talking about him being in the cage, it was just kind of like humiliating the actor. And the character uh-huh. as well. Like I felt, I felt that way too. It felt like very unlike Bert for him to be in that situation and acting like that. It's not. It. To, <laughs> I've had to refocus how I hate these those movies from a, a technical aspect to a character aspect, which is much. It means so much more. Like, damn man, he just fucking butchered the guy. Like that's not. <laughs> damn man. Like, and it's not in that not in that way where it's. Uh, the other people who don't know Burt Gummer, like, and turning him into a right wing paranoia, like, conservative symbol, but like, man, you guys are, don't know him on the opposite sense, where it's like, this wouldn't even happen to that guy. Like, you're, you, he has no humanity. Like, there's, you're not giving him that due credit of, like, he cares. Actually, what we were talking about was Black Hand Kelly uh, teaching Hiram and then Burt teaching the, the Travises and the, yeah. the Tylers. Like, he cares. He cares a lot more than that. And don't you dare try to pretend otherwise. So I it's kind of wonder... Thing in the TV sh- Oh, go ahead, go ahead. If they were originally going to use a train, I wonder if this last shot was originally planned for being drug, uh, having the uh, warm th- drug actually, with the I, train. I, I think they lured it out of the train, from what I remember of it. But again, I assumed... 
if you're going to rewrite it, yeah, this just got rewritten. Yeah. <coughs> to make that work. And oh, look, all those people got covered in graboids. I bet they're going to get cancer or we're just going to forget about that. I mean, I don't know. No, graboid cancer only applies when we need it for a plot device. Right, exactly. I've wondered about that too. Like, why everybody gets slimed with pump uh, with with graboid guts, but only the one you know one character that we all root for is the one who gets sick. Yeah, yeah. We got him. No, <clears throat> we got him. Yeah, there's the family. <laughs> yeah. That's why I said I'm gonna. I'm so excited. I will watch this movie for three, four, five commentaries because it is just so cheerful and hum- human and hooray, and I'm into it. <laughs> yeah. Yay! And yeah, by the time we get here, all of this is earned. <laughs> the family feeling. We we know what's going to happen because you're like, oh, so this is where the, everything else comes in. We got, Ma- oh, look, it's Miguel. I mean, Juan. Oh, look, it's Reba. I mean, Christine. Right. Oh, look, it's Walter. I mean. <laughs> no, it's great the way that it comes together and it also cross references itself. Very smartly done because it's very hard to do and not make it clunky or cheap. Or, yeah, cheap to really get to this point. We needed all that character stuff for it to happen. Right. And then, yeah, and then, and then, I'm s- quite surprised that, you know, Juan wasn't like, I would like a, a lifetime supply of hats. <laughs> <laughs> I just want my hat. I could, yeah, please, Mr. Gummer, I would like a hat. <laughs> I would like 18 hats. Oh, here it is. This week. Yeah, perfection. Okay, and you, you don't, you don't take down water towers in the middle of the desert. I'm really thinking about that. Okay, because this is... An, oh, maybe the water tower got bad with age. That water tower has been sitting there since the 1889. And I don't believe me, I don't believe you when you say between the years of 2000 to 2015 that it got into disrepair. Right. <laughs> yeah. What a cop. I have a hard time buying that one. <laughs> I am fearfully Especially outclassed. There's that specific episode about drilling a well. Sorry, what'd you say? Oh, I was just, he said, I'm fearfully outclassed when talking to uh, the other character. And, you know, it's like kind of like the, the same relationship that he and Heather have in uh, the first movie, you know, where she's kind of more badass oh, yeah. than he is. <laughs> and he doesn't want to admit it, or maybe he does. I, I don't know. I trust Heather a little more. <laughs> uh, uh, <coughs> she's, Heather's way, got it way more on the ball. I'm always glad that she divorced him because, uh. <laughs> Reba's Reba's better than Reba's better than uh, Bert. You can do better, girl. Right. Um, <laughs> oh, here we go. Because, uh, the, yeah. The, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, I talked about it with the seventh one. Yeah, man, let's do the, like, Bert, have a relationship with somebody. Because the last time we didn't, we didn't get it in any other movies. Like, give him a real life relationship. Let, let Michael Gross act. And get to this point, because there, there's your guns, people. Look, be happy. That's that's so good. It's so well earned, too. <laughs> I said, I'm ambivalent about guns. I can give or take them or whatever. But I like other people's passions. And there's there's one. <laughs> Crazy town banana pants. Okay, we read the credits now, right? Do we take turns reading them? Uh, I mean, we don't have to read them. I mean, I just, I like sitting here. I like (laughs) forcing other people to sit here through them. So, yeah. Get over it, peeps. Brent (laughs) Rome. Todd Forsenberg. (laughs) Don Ruffin. Leo Carlucci. Jennifer Parsons. Nitha Shurivitan. See, no nicknames in this one either. Right. Michael Boo. Greg Dellerson. Greg Gain. <laughs> Scott Putman. John Fors, Steve Evans. Carly Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Assistant <laughs> to Mr. Wilson. Pedro Coase. <laughs> mm, uh. 
We're reading the credit, Sean Day. <laughs> <laughs> no, he jumped up here with me. Here, let's we'll see. <laughs> yeah, see, we went we went through the whole movie. AJ Firewalker! Uh, he's the weapons technical advisor? Okay. That's an That's awesome just, name. We see what you're doing there, AJ. <laughs> I'm Greg AJ Nicoletto. Firewalker, and I'm here. Actually, I, he's... Shit, I know that name. Greg Nicotero. I've seen him in a lot of sci-fi stuff. I hmm. should know that one. Oh, man. Nick Mara. Yeah. yeah, Greg Nicotero again. Oh, so I oh, he's a puppeteer. know that name from a couple of things. Puppeteer. Um, I'm going to need to look that one up before I do my my, compre my comprehensive one. John Kevin Gibbons. Kuchaver. Actually, I call him out because he's got Sonic a lot of Magic. great behind-the-scenes photos he's like shared. that name. Yeah, Sonic Magic. Oh, oh my god, is that... Oh my god, Tremors 4 is now playing downstairs with them guys. Can some, why don't you guys go shut the door? Maji? Can you go shut the door? Whoever came up here, I need someone to shut the door. Wesley we can't hear back there. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> Steve Vincent, No, you came up after him. Gentle Jungle. SS Wilson. Animal Wranglers. I oh, Gentle guy. Jungle. I was like, is that a person? Oh, who's, who's Gentle Jungle? SS Wilson. I know him. Uh, I know him. I know him. I know him. I know him. Steve Wilson's coming to town. Who is Steve Wilson? He's the guy. Steve Wilson is the guy that made Tremors. Like, legit made me. Legit. Yeah, and see, there's the the four horses the right four there at the horses. end. The Stampede Entertainment. A Stampede. Stampede. Stamp Stampede, Earl. Oh, You've been Stampede. watching Tremors for the Legend Begins. Thank legend you. Begins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you guys watched the whole movie? Yeah, we watched the whole movie. We watched see? it. Yep. Was it good? Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? It was pretty. That was actually really great. Pretty man. awesome. Yeah. Wow, I, I I'm trying to think. I, we went through like everything. I, 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 this is where I meant I have no questions for you because I know we'll learn about each other along the way. Yeah. So it's, uh, no, this is this was really fun. I, this you've got some great. This is my first time ever doing. You got some great narrative sense. This kind of commentary or any you know, YouTube videos really or anything like that. I always did Twitch before in the past. Uh, this is my first time doing any of it at all either. Too. I was gonna say, besides the. The straight up video ones that I've done. This is my only. Wait, did we just with become best friends? Person. Uh, yeah. <laughs> bum, 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 Let's go do karate. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> it's funny these guys are here because I'm always joking with their mom about that. Hey, we'll have so much more room for activities. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Why did you let us do this? <laughs> That is these guys. I love <laughs> and I can't actually. I'm fully like. It's not even just them. It is me too. Where we'll be. Yeah, we'll be jumping around and stuff. Actually, before we started, their stipulation to me was we had to play graboid. Nice. Which is me. I I'm underneath the covers on the bed, grabbing them. <laughs> with, with your your tongues or your tentacles or whatever. Oh hell yep. yep. Hell yeah, man. They got to come out of the ground. <laughs> Can we do that after this? Yeah, we'll do one after this. Actually, that's where we're finishing up here with Kevin, and we can do one with you guys after. That was kind of my plan. All right. Do you? Because I wanted to explain the movie to you. I was explaining are we still to recording? Should I turn that what off? Was that? Or? Oh no! Keep recording. I, I I like this little bit at the end. People will be like, "Wait, Levi is around kids? What the fuck is this?" <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, right? Like. <laughs> But I was going to end on, uh, what do you got any, like, do you have any questions? What's your, like I said, you're the new fan to all this. What's your take? My take, I, you know, so I've seen, I've seen all the movies a whole bunch and the, the TV show. I'm wondering if I should start watching the special features and like commentary tracks and stuff like that. Yes. Okay. I can do yeah, that. Yeah, I actually, I'm a little, uh, 
Uh, I was going to do it, but I, then I had these guys, so we got caught up into it. But I need to listen to the Tremors 4 commentary track. I think I found out that there is, like, one whole, like one commentary track that Steve Wilson did. Like, out of all the movies, I think he had, like, a grand total of one. So it's like, oh, fuck yeah, I gotta, I gotta listen to that. I didn't even realize until I went to go turn on the DVD. I usually watch off my downloads and yeah. stuff, so it's like, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, man. I got to check this out. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, you I, like special features in any way. I don't really have questions or anything. Like, I think the, the biggest thing is, I, you know, I hope I talked enough and all that kind of stuff. I, I, I haven't done one of these before, so I don't know. <laughs> I try not to worry about things either. <laughs> no, your, your input was invaluable. Like I said, I'm going to be thinking about a lot of the story things that you said, the character things, when I'm moving into my next one. Cool. A, yeah. I gotta figure out the chaos of uh, Juan's hat. To see what's uh, yeah right what really happened in there. I almost need. I almost want to like message Steve, email him, and be like, "Hey, like, what's the what's the hat thing all about?" Yeah, uh, I bet he has some kind of answer, regardless. Oh, he knows. Oh my, you can just ask him anything. But yeah, he knows. Man's like a steel trap. It's kind of amazing. Yeah, I, I haven't submitted any questions uh, for, into the website yet. I'm, I, I think I'm a little afraid. Of what might come back. <laughs> oh. Well, I have to admit that I definitely sent Steve an email this morning after I'd listened to your video, uh, you know, and uh, I was like, hey, I actually went because it was, I always like to send him news. I hate fan girling out around him, so I always like to hear something that happened. And uh, that Reddit post that I made, uh, which was the Burt Gummer's gun safety went fucking wild with the dude from TikTok and YouTube reusing it or whatever. Had like three and a half million views, so I got to send him that. Wow. And then I sent him... Yeah, no, I was like, what the fuck? Like, they took, they took whatever post I had and, like, reused it. I was like, god damn. That's god, awesome. Yeah. And, and then Zorin Gavojic, who's doing the kill counts, uh, actually flashed the... Call Stampede Entertainment fact on the screen while doing the kill count. Nice. On like from last Friday. Uh huh. Like legit was like, and here like, because he was talking about how uh, Steve is always answering questions back and forth, and one of the ones was the Shrieker numbers, because in the second movie they say three, but then in the third movie it's six, and Steve actually there's a time in between like. The, the Tremors 5 thing where he was talking to people actually back and forth like answering questions about oh, okay well that's that and then like and Zorn was like oh hey if you still have questions for Steve today call them or message them at, at this website yeah. flashed it on screen oh that's awesome so I took a picture of that so that so there was that there was the TikTok guy and I bring it all back around because I always like to and the real reason that I sent this email was I had to be like Steve you gotta watch this your writing perfection uh and it's like i know that there's the weird like fan fiction things this is perfect you need to like actually watch this and i ended it with i mean how can you go wrong with a character named wilson stevens <laughs> so i sent steve your 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 writing perfection thing so uh not sorry <laughs> well, and, and don't it forget was good, Clancy, man. He's, he's i know he will <laughs> Did you get that one too, Clancy Hoggerts? Oop. Sorry, I lost you. One more time. Did you did you get that other reference too, uh, Clancy Hoggerts? No, I didn't get the Clancy. N Nancy Roberts. Oh god! <laughs> Clancy. Oh. Oh. See, I was expecting a Brent, so that's where my mind was. Oh, Clancy Hoggerts. Oh, that's good. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh shit! Now I gotta kind of remess it. Oh shit! Oh shit! I tried to be That's less subtle oh, man, with that, that one. That was a great name too. Yeah, Wilson Stevens and Clancy Hobbard. Oh, I can't believe. Uh. <laughs> By the way, that Clancy voice. As much as you like my voice, Mister, what you do, <laughs> Mister? This is beautiful. The hell are you doing? You get out of there, Mister. There's monsters out there. Oh, monsters. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. 
So, yeah, man. Let's see, yeah. What was that it? I'm trying to think of anything else. It's a lot of fun. I'll probably I'll do say some. that. You know, I didn't I didn't have nerves or anything like that. It was just fun. I felt like I was hanging out with you. Like, I mean, we were doing that. We were just hanging out. Oh, that's why I kind of loved it. Yeah. And I was really looking forward to it. Because I've just been talking to the screen myself here. So this is going to be... This is good proof to everybody watching or listening. Yeah, man. Who wants to come on and, and guest? It's going to be a good time. Yeah, man. absolutely. Yes. I highly recommend everybody... Uh, do that. Check it out. Yeah, I got to get uh, Jeff and Kevin from Sons and Shadows on next. Yep. That's my... Yep. Or actually, I need to talk to Zoran. That's my one. Like, hey, man. Want to wanna get together? I think... Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm doing the TV show. Like, I'm doing oh, every single episode. Yeah. We're going to do a comment. So if you want to come back for one, I like we're doing all 13. Pick your favorite episode. You get first dibs. Oh, man. They're all my favorite. I mean... I, I, uh, I don't know, but minus four twelve. That's where I'm at. Four <laughs> twelve. Yeah. If you if you invite me yeah. back though, yeah, I will I will come again. I promise. Hell yeah, man. Cool. Anything else? No. John Day, do you have anything? The only, I mean, I guess Magic? the only thing I, I would say uh, off record is you know where do I send stuff to? But I can ask you that on like text or something. Uh, as far as I know, it's the Tremor Saga at Gmail or like or if you have that Terabox thing. That's as far as I know. Okay. Just uploading stuff to there. I'll look that up. Uh, that's usually where I upload my stuff, and then they can download it from there. Oh, you so. send them the link. Okay, I got you. Like a Dropbox type of thing. That's what, they have a, the Tremor Saga at gmail.com. So. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll make sure I get it all sent over. Fuck yeah, Ben. Yeah, yeah. This will be fun. To, like I said, I can't wait to see this edited together. Right, yeah. Okay, well, cool. Well, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it, and uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. And I'm sure you're going to do special thanks yourself. Um, but you know, I, I concur with any special thanks that that you give, of course. Oh, it's gonna be you're gonna be right at the top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, good to see you guys. It was nice to to meet your nephew, and uh, maybe next time we'll see uh, your kitty cat too, huh? Oh yeah, I've got three of them too. Actually, I got four of them now. So yeah, cool. I got whole family. Oh, that's why I like family. <laughs> awesome. Love you, Kevin. Thank you Bye, so much, love man. You too. See ya, bud. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye. Oh, ah. Uh, wow, that was cool. All right, so now we got to do our thanks. All right, Shande. So, that's what we do. Check it out. You're on this list, too. Yeah. Where? Right here. Lacey and the boys. Why? Yeah. So, I've got to... Am I? Yeah, you're all on the list. Here, you want to come here and sit with me, Maji? Maji, want to come sit? While we do our thanks. All right. So, we got to thank Kevin. That was an awesome episode. Uh, holy What's wow, we went through a lot. That was a whole bunch of stuff. What's Kevin Kevin's? Collins. Oh. Okay. Yeah, no, no, that's up there. Uh, so, thank you, Kevin. I can't thank wait to have you, you on again. That was dope. Ah. Uh, thank you to Steve S.S. Wilson and Michelle Wilson and Bob Wilson. You guys are dope. We love you so much. Thank you for everything. Um... Thank you to Kevin Smith and Harley Smith, uh, especially you, Harley. Thanks for pushing, making me be less autistic and getting things out there and trying. <laughs> uh, thanks, Jeff Johnson, too, with the Suns and Shadows podcast. If you haven't listened, you need to listen to the Suns and Shadows podcast interview with Steve S.S. Wilson. He just gave it about a week ago. It's freaking awesome. Thank you to one Mr. Baby Fark McGeezax. He's Baby Fark Imger on Twitter. Follow him. Follow him on, on Imger or Twitter. Uh, they make the intergalactic quality gifts that make Burt Gummer Day possible, that make everything possible, that allow the Tremor Saga to communicate with all the people that they do in the ways that they do. It's, yeah. So follow Baby Fark McGeezax, Baby Fark Imger on Twitter. Uh, thank you to Anthony Has Issues podcast for all of her help in editing. Thank you to Glenn Maddock for being a huge source of resources behind the scenes uh, for helping everything, getting a lot of this facilitated and done. And then in that same breath and instance, thank you to Nancy Roberts, Ron Underwood, and Brent Maddock for every single thing that you have created and done. Mwah. You're all beautiful. Love you so freaking much. Uh, and also on that note, thank you to Jonathan Melville of the Tremors Guide 
And if you love Tremors in any kind of sense at all, this is you too, Shonday. You got to make sure you read the Seeking Perfection Tremors Guide. It's 300 pages of Tremors. You got to check it out, man. It's a whole it's a whole book. That's where I learned a lot of my stuff, yo. Uh, thank, there's a couple people on Twitter that have been retweeting and helping it out. Thank you to Matt McKentrick. Uh, you're in Germany. You're super awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you to Oliver at Grand House Chic. Again, for the retweet and the Karen behind the scenes. Some big people, really. Bob Rushy, Alicia Pearson, Ashy Slashy, and Metal Recon. You guys are just great on Twitter. Thank you so much for your support, love, and caring. <laughs> they can see you, Shonday. This will be on the video. Like, my nephew, Shonday, is making faces if you're in podcast land. So, you know, like, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> and a huge, huge thank you to Rattle Sire, Rattle Cat for, again, behind-the-scenes work, getting a lot of this started and done. Talking Tremors wouldn't be here without you, Rattlecat. Thank you so much. Uh, there's a couple more Twitter people. Uh, Cravey Cinema and Helena Sorum. Uh, just Cravey's been putting out some memes. Helena Sorum keeps like watching the Tremors movies and reporting in. It's fantastico. Um, did you know that Lojack... On Twitter, L O J A K K has a Tremors Call of Duty tournament that is happening on February 20th. Sign into the Discord. There should be a link somewhere. Ask for a link if you need one. Uh, Lojack will get you in and you can check that out. Uh, I always like to plug a good charity. The Lava Lamp Foundation is made by a couple of friends of mine. A uh, brother and sister whose brother died to a heroin overdose. And it's about giving people the tools that they need in order to seek help without feeling ashamed. So if you can, donate to the Lava Lamp Foundation. I don't get paid for this. This is just me doing stuff in my free time. So if you don't want to give me any money and you want to give some money to somebody who really needs it that's not Stampede. And you don't want to buy Freddy Cats or Tucker's Monster because you already have them already. Then check out the Lava Lamp Foundation. And I got to thank my pappy and my ma and my sister Lacey for helping and being there and caring and being awesome and stuff and just supporting me in every single way that you can. And then really big thanks to Sean Day and then Samaje is over there. Ma, do you want to say hi? No, he's good. He's playing his video game. <laughs> uh, and Sean Trell. And Sean Trell's not here right now. All three of these guys and their brother Shamar are my inspiration to keep doing this. To make a better thing for all of you guys. So that way you can grow up loving Tremors as much as I have. And my final one, you want to say it with me? Is my most important person. Who I love more than anything is... Caitlin! Caitlin! Caitlin Marie Lutt Bursloff, I love you so much. Thank you for marrying me, loving me, supporting me in all this tremor stuff, and not wanting or not punching me. I know you want to, not punching me when I do all my voices. And you know, Earl, what is it, kid? <laughs> I don't know. Damn it. <laughs> uh, thank you for loving me and supporting me. You're the absolute best. And that's it, Sean Day. That's it. That's our podcast. Well, make sure you check out Hollywood Unseen and another film nerd, too. Another great guys that gave me a whole bunch of behind the scenes on this. So give them all the love you need. Uh, if you're already listening to this, you know the Tremor Saga on Twitter. Uh, there's a TikTok Tremor Saga now. There's a Tremor Saga on Imgur. There's a Discord. Don't join the Facebook group because it's run by the Hollywood Universal Tremors people themselves. Nah. If you have any questions about Tremors, go to the Stampede Entertainment site and check it out. And that's it. Uh, yeah. Sade, you want to say bye? Bye. Bye. Because it's time for ending. This is when we stop a podcast in. Because it's now the end of. Tremor shit!
been making a podcast for two hours. I did. I did notice. It has been a two-hour podcast. So thank you all. Thank you, Stampede Entertainment. Thank you, The Tremors Saga. Thank you. This has been Tremors 4, The Legend Begins. Yeah.